I had this analogy about year 12, which I like to think about, and it's that year 12 is a race, but there's no finish line. It's just whoever can go the furthest from the start line will win the race and will get a good score, right? If you're in the top um, 2% of people, you'll get a 98 at a time. If you're in the top 10% of people that made it the furthest, you will get a 98 at okay? That's how I think of it. And if you think about your daily habits and how you study, when you get close to a sack and an exam, everyone is running, right? So how are you going to overtake all these other people? Close to a sack and an exam, right? You're running, um, your friend's running, your other friend's running, you're all running at high speed because you're all doing past papers and you're doing questions and you're trying to learn the theory and you're going to be meeting your teachers and trying to figure out all these questions. So you're all studying hard. And yes, you're getting better and you're going to get a higher score, but so is everyone else. And remember, the ATAR is a ranking system. Your study score is a ranking system. It just depends on how well you do compared to everyone else. So think of it like a race. If you're studying close to a sack, close to an exam, so is everyone else. You're all running at full speed. So it's very unlikely you're going to overtake someone. Okay, But where this changes is if during the semester, when it's not close to a sack, when it's not close to an exam, if you're just doing half an hour of work or one hour of work effectively every single day, and you're using the principles like the 80-20 rule, where you do 20% of the work, which gives you 80% of the results, then, or 80% of the depth of knowledge, I've talked about this in one of the previous videos, then what you have to, well, what'll end up happening is you'll be running while everyone else is just walking or sitting on the, on the racetrack. And you'll end up running and you will end up getting further than everyone else so that when it comes close to a sack or an exam, and you start running, everyone else starts running, what's going to happen is you're already ahead of everyone else. So you're just, you're, you're keeping up with that distance, right? You've created that distance during the semester because you've done the work beforehand consistently. It just, you just need to be consistent with it. You need to do an hour or half an hour of work consistently every single day, and that will put you ahead of everyone else, right? It might not put you ahead in one day, but over time, over months, it'll add up just like taking 20 or 30 steps a day. If you do it for months, if you do it for um, weeks and months, it's gonna add up. You're gonna look back and you're gonna think, I am so much ahead of everyone else that even if they start studying at full speed or start running at full speed, I'm gonna run at full speed as well. Or even if I don't run at full speed, there's no way anyone's gonna catch up to me, okay? That's how I thought about year 12. And that's how you should think about year 12 as well. Because and you might think that's a toxic way to think about year 12, but the reason I think it's not toxic is because you've got to understand how something is assessed in order to do really well with that, right? Year 12, the ATAR you study score is a ranking system. You have to do better than everyone else. To get a 90 ATAR means that you get in the top 10% of all students in the whole of Victoria, in the whole of Australia. So if you want to take that into advantage, if you want to take that into consideration rather, then what you have to do is you need to your daily habits need to reflect this. You need to keep that goal in the back of your head and you need to compete with everyone else. The way you compete with everyone else is just by being consistent because by being consistent, it means you're gaining space, you're making space, you're creating that distance when you can. You can't create that distance close to a sack, close to an exam. You can only create that distance when people are not running, but you are running. How do you create that distance? You create that distance during the semester when people are not studying, but you are studying. Okay, easiest analogy for you to understand this, but it's the one that's going to take you the furthest. This doesn't mean that you have to toxically do four, five, six, seven hours of study every single day just because you need to get ahead of everyone else at the start. All it means is you need to be consistent with it. And the reason why a lot of people struggle to be consistent is because you're trying to go from level zero to level 100 in one day, right? All you have to do is build that habit of consistency. The habit of consistency is different to the habit of studying, okay? The way you develop the habit of consistency with studying is by starting off really small. So you would start with just half an hour of studying and you would make it sort of a routine. So for example, wake up an hour earlier, do half an hour of study before you go to school. Do that for a whole week. The second day, you might think, oh, I'm only doing half an hour of study. It's not even that effective, right? Don't worry about it. What's effective is going to be when you compound your results later on because you're building that consistency. You don't realize how far you've gone until you actually look back, right? So just do another half an hour the next day, another half an hour the next day, another half an hour the next day, okay? Only do this if you're struggling to be consistent. If you're already able to study for two, three hours a day consistently, well then, good job. 
But if you're, if you're struggling to be consistent, the easiest way to be consistent is not by trying to do two hours of study a day, it's by just doing half an hour of study a day. Even 10 minutes, even 20 minutes. Start with 10, start with 20 minutes. After a week, push it up to half an hour. After a week, push it up to one and a half hours. After a week, push it up to two and a half hours, right? Keep increasing the time that you spend studying um, progressively. It's like anything with life, like going to the gym, for example. Going to the gym, you have to increase the weights progressively throughout the whole year or throughout the, the time you're going to the gym. That's the only way you will give the stimulus to your body to start building muscle, right? Same thing with studying. You have to give the stimulus to your brain and you have to sort of trick your brain into thinking, oh, this guy is consistent. Since this guy is consistent, it means that he will do it again tomorrow. He'll do it again the next day. He'll do it again the, the day after that, and he'll continue doing it. So at that point, it becomes a habit, right? All you have to do is just build that habit. And the way you build that habit is by swallowing your ego, right? Don't think that you can study for two hours every single day just because that's the goal, right? You don't start off by getting to the goal, right? If you're trying to do cold showers, you don't start off by jumping into ice cold water for 20 minutes, um, just like Wim Hof, right? You start off by taking a cold shower for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. You increase this to a minute, two minutes, three minutes, right? And then eventually you can do things like running a half marathon on Mount Everest without your shoes, like Wim Hof. Do you think that he was able to do that in just one shot? No, he's not able to do that in one shot. You have to progressively overload anything in life and it all starts with these little wins, right? Little wins, study for 10 minutes a day, do it consistently, do it for half an hour, do it for one hour. I feel like I'm rambling here, but it's so important that you understand this. Don't try and go to level 100 when you're only on level two, right? Go to level three, then four, then five, and continue onwards. If you can find a proper routine, stick to that routine, don't compromise the routine, do this consistently, and you will get results um, that you will be really surprised with, okay? If you couple this with effective studying methods, right? The 80-20 rule, doing the 20% of the work, which will give you 80% of the results, then what'll end up happening is you'll be able to do more work in an hour than people are gonna be doing in five hours, six hours, seven hours, okay? Because you're doing the 80-20 rule. Because the amount of effort that you put into that one hour will pretty much multiply and compound. You will get eight hours of knowledge from that one hour of work. So if you don't understand what I'm saying here, the 80-20 rule, the depth of knowledge sort of concept, which I'm talking about, I have a video about that. Go and watch that video. It's really effective in understanding how to work smart and not hard.